If you know you got a good ledge, work it. Don't don't leave it. There it is. There it is. There it is. That's a big one. That's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I think that's a ling, bro. Welcome back, guys. In today's episode, we are pocket fishing. Not poke pulling, but pocket fishing. We have a king tide, low tide of negative two, which is the most I've ever seen and probably gonna be the lowest tide of the year today in a few hours. So we're gonna get to the spot. We actually have a special guest today. His name's Vincent Culliver. He's been doing this a really long time and he may deserve credit for coining the phrase pocket fishing. He's been doing it for probably decades now and we're gonna learn from him and hopefully you guys can take some of the techniques and apply them in your local area and have the same results. What we have out here is ideal pocket fishing. You got these huge waves in the background. I don't know if you could see those. None of that's affecting us right now. We're in an area where the water's still, it's sitting, it's starting to clear up. Low tide is a negative 1.8 at four o'clock in the evening. So we come out here, we start at 11, we fish it all the way down. Might not be able to fish it all the way up, do the sunlight, but we'll do our best. But we have an area here just in this 200 by 200, there might be 50 fish here. You know, it just depends on how good these guys get in here and work the pockets. So you want a low tide, it doesn't have to be negative. And I'll be honest, a lot of people ask me, hey, where else can you do this at? Where else, where else can you pocket fish? And I tell them, I don't know, because I don't go out anywhere else to do it. We do it here, we're lucky. We have this mega structure out here called Prisma Point. And to be honest with you, not everybody can access it. That's why I'm fine with telling where it's at. But at the end of the day, it's a great place to fish. Ideal conditions, negative, anything negative on the tides makes it even better conditions. It just allows you to fish longer. It extends your distance where you can go. A negative 2.3 and four, we fished out here before, and you're able to keep going. It's really cool. Opens up different areas you've never seen before. Check out where we are. This is usually well, well, well underwater. This is the first time I've seen this point go all the way out. Usually the water's all the way back here, but we're gonna be able to fish over there. And we're out here fishing with military members uh, that are active duty, res uh, reservists, retirees, and then civilians. Pocket wow. fishing, right? Low tide is the best time to do it. Um, used to do a lot of fishing um, with uh, squid and mackerel. Who's, who's still doing that? <laughs> right? That's so. Who goes home with squid mackerel still? <laughs> I hate it. My wife hated that. Um, and then I would actually leave it in the back of my truck on accident and then the raccoons would go get it. And so like pocket fishing is pretty cool because you go home with a bunch of plastics and you don't have that problem. This place is like really good for this, what we're going to do. There's a point right now where the waves are breaking and it's about, a two, it's about 200 yards from shore. A uh, couple things on it, you gotta watch which, how you walk. It's super slippery. Um, anything brown, anything green, it, you're probably gonna fall on your ass. It's easier to walk in the water, in the pool. That's why I think we said in the email, wear something you can get wet in. If you, if, if you see like you're on a ledge, you're gonna have to be on a ledge on certain points. That's great, watch the ledge. I'm probably 260. Some ledges out here don't support 260. And you'll find out real quick, you'll fall. We've had people fall out here. To worry about this, you gotta feel your way through with your feet. Surge comes through, it's kinda, kind of a pain to get a lure down if you don't have a good enough weight. Wait till that surge goes, get your lure back down. You can use your foot to find the edge. If there is an edge, if not, you keep going. Get to the edge. Happens. So everybody just be careful how you walk. And saying that, we'll end up walking down here at a certain point and we'll get in there for the people who have never done this, all you're doing is using a, um, a rod and reel. So we're using a Komodo, the 200 series, a really small one. Um, what that does is it gives us a low profile to sit in your hand, makes it a lot easier to carry. It's not a big round ball of mass here. Um, obviously, Akuma made a, a great product here. They got the click so you can hear yourself drag out when you got a fish on. Uh, it's got a good drag set on it. And then we coupled it up with uh, Oliver over at Syndicate made us a special pocket fishing rod 
Okay, it's, it's all custom made just for Jurassic Sport Fishing and anybody else that wants to buy them. You guys can order them from him. They're, I think, five foot, six inch, rated at 15 to 30 pounds. We run braid on these straight to the lure. Um, they're short, so you can you can get right below you. You can you don't have to worry about a six to seven foot rod sticking way out and you have to choke up on it. You can be right on the reel, which that low profile reel helps you do that. And bam, like if you get a fish, it's a whole lot easier to control. So we've always wanted a shorter stick. Um, and this is what they came up with, which works out really good for pocket fishing. Um, making it really popular. We put the trigger on there, make it a little easier to hold on to so you don't fall when you fall or you lose your balance, you got that trigger to hold on to. Okay. The foam makes it a good grip. All in all, it's a great, it's a great rod setup. It's they didn't skimp on it. Everything's really custom made rod, but for being out here, hit up Oliver at Syndicate Fishing or Syndicate Rods and and, and or Fishing Syndicate and get get one. Let them know we sent you over there. Okay. You really don't need a long rod because you're going to be pretty much doing this right underneath you. So it's gonna, I'm going to be standing on a ledge and I'm going to be fishing underneath the ledge right underneath me. And the best part about this fishing is you'll see the fish come out, grab the lure and go back underneath the water. It's pretty neat. It's, it's really cool how it works. There, there, the bite's starting. The bite is starting. We got a good color. That, that, oop, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is. Woo! There we go. That's a nice grassy rockfish. Um, on the on the madam lures, baby. On the madam lures. Doing it, doing it. Throw him over there. He hide over there. See if we can get another one over here. And he just came out right from under this ledge. That's where they're at. Never fails. Try to get up as far as up under there as you can. The smaller the lure, the lure, the better. I have a few other baits if people want to try them. I have some red tubes. If you want to try them, those work really good out here. Um, what you think you're going to pass up, and we'll get down there and we'll talk about it some more. A lot of people pass up fishing. Probably today it's going to be a couple hundred yards of tide, intertidal changes we'll be able to fish. And within those intertidal changes, people pass those up and want to cast. And... We would watch people cast and we'd be catching all kinds of fish and those people are still waiting. You'll catch fish casting, but you're gonna catch a lot of fish doing this. All right, we've got a monkey eel right here. This is on the madam lure. Nice prickle face, prickle back monkey face eel. There you go. You can see what we got him on. This doesn't normally happen. He's about a foot, a little over a foot long. Light, light jig head. He wants off, he's like, get me out of this thing. These things are super slimy. They taste really good, but I'm gonna let him go. One foot of water is all you need. I'll repeat, one foot of water is all you need to catch a fish. If you see standing water and there's a rock and there's a ledge underneath, you can't see underneath it, fish it. Because in one foot of water, you'll get, you'll get, we've caught in 41 inch ling cod in a foot of water out here. There's a lot of ling cod, there's grassy rockfish, there's greenlings, black and yellows, Cabazon. Oh. There he is. There he is. Yeah, <laughs> hey, I think I got you too. Oh, the quick release. <laughs> the, the goal is not to cast anything. If anything, I'm going to flip like to you. Don't worry, I got you, bro. <laughs> I got you. I, that's the farthest I'm going to cast in this whole freaking place. That's it. And, and I'm going to see it, and it'd be like there's a ledge right there. And then you're going to see a fish come out, grab it. No need to set a hook. There's no need to, to yank the out of it. All you're doing, not much. It's really all you need, right? And if this was water, all I'm doing is jigging this guy up and down. Up and down. That's it. That's all I'm doing. And as I walk, I'm just jigging along the rock ledge. And if that's the ledge right there, I'm just right up underneath it. I bring it back. All you need is how much, how much water do you need to catch fish? One foot, right? One foot, that's it. Anything more, it's a bonus, but it doesn't have to be deep. It could be like right under that rock. But as the tide goes out, you're gonna get this whole ledge to walk out on. You fish the whole thing all the way out. Fish it coming back. 
you miss a fish, it, like you'll see it come out, it'll hit it. It's gonna wanna go back underneath. If I hit a fish right there, it's gonna wanna go under there. If I miss it, just wait a couple minutes, go right back under, they'll hit it again. Memory's bad, so they'll just, they'll hit the, they'll hit the lure again. I, I, I typically use braid just because it's strong, you're gonna feel everything. There's no need to set a hook out here. There's no, not rolling Martin. You don't need to be rolling Martin out here, okay? Just let, let, the, let the fish hit it and just lift up. And, and if you got braid, you'll pull them right up out of the hole. If you have monofilament or fluorocarbon, it's gonna wanna stretch. They're gonna get in there. They're gonna get stuck. You're not gonna get them out. You'll have to wait. So that means you'll really have to, you know, get a pull on them, but don't try to set a hook. You don't need to. You might get a strike. It might say, it might be a really like territorial hit, and then they're gonna let it go. Um, we we'll, 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 we brought nine inch swim baits out here, and they've fish have hammered them. Then the fish is smaller than the lure, so uh, it's pretty cool. Like it's 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 a lot of fun. I can't, can't lie. This is funnest fishing you could do. And if you don't get anything on the first pass, turn around, and go back. Keep it tight, tight to the ledge. Remember if. You're not catching anything, change the color. Don't keep fishing a color that's not gonna work. Closest to the ledge you can get. Your lure sometimes will be bigger than the fish in here and they'll scare them. It's okay. Just keep working it. Not too quick, not too slow though. Just pop it, pop it, pop it. If you don't get anything, that's okay. You got a friend that's fishing, have them come up behind you and see if they can pick it up. That happened earlier, a guy, his color wasn't good. I came right behind him and I got a bite. He changed his color, he started getting bites. Jigging. Don't jig out here, unless you know there's a rock there. Jig along here. And what you're gonna do is just jig along here, jig along here. The closer to the ledge you get, the better. Gotta be close, it helps to be really close. Maneuver around. If you can see under the ledge, try to flip it under the ledge, just like that. Really deep up under there, that was actually perfect. So, you don't get anything, that's okay. Just keep on moving. Little ledges, little ledges, like right there, that'd be a little ledge, this whole ledge right here. Um, on some cases, you're gonna have rocks coming into themselves. Drop that thing in there, in between. If there's not enough water, nothing comes out, don't stay. Keep going. Okay, you hit a fish, you miss it, Try it again. If you miss it again, move to another spot, but come back. Probably hit it again. Get up, get back to where you can start again. Look at your ledge first. Make sure you can even fish it. Yield grass, great place to be. Fish are near the eel grass all the time. It's a lot of lings near the eel grass. Do you see that? Did you catch that right there? There was a fish right here. Just jumped in the water from right here. Oh, well, maybe. I don't know what that was. Crap? I don't know. Work those ledges, work the ledges. So you pick a color and it's dark, murky water that is a, I like to pick a solid, not a transparent or translucent bait. That way they know like, okay, that's a bait there. That's, I wanna eat that. It's just gonna keep going around. You don't need a lot of water. You only need about a foot of water. So all we're doing is you want a ledge that's, that can hold about a foot of water and you're gonna dance this jig, dance this jig, dance this jig. I'm gonna walk it around, pick it up where I can't. Don't get hung up. A lot of water coming from here. So I gotta pick up because there's a lot of structure that won't let me get in there or fish in there. So now I can get to a point and it's gonna get deeper over here. It's normally where we start picking them up at. Watch your footing in the eelgrass. It gets slippery. If you know you got a good ledge, work it. Don't, don't leave it. There it is, there it is, there it is. That's a big one, that's a big one. That's a big one. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I think that's a ling, bro. Oh, it's a, it's a good grassy, bro. Good grassy. 
Nice. Hit like a ling. Heck yeah. Good, good little grassy rockfish. Good eating size right there on the Madam Lure. Let him go over there. He's going to go right back under the uh, deal. Hopefully we don't catch him again. So he came out. He, it, yeah, right. I thought I thought it was a ling at first. The way he turned on it. Oh well. Yeah, they they grab it, they turn, and it's done. You know, you don't need to set a hook out here. There's, you don't need to be Roland Martin or what's that other guy? What's that other late guy that's like? Bill Dance. Yeah, Bill Dance. That's what it is. Hopefully you guys learned a lot about pocket fishing from somebody who's done it a really long time. So big shout out and thank you to Vince Culliver of Jurassic Sport Fishing. I will go ahead and leave a link to his socials below, including his YouTube channel where he has a bunch of clips where he's doing a lot more pocket fishing. And in this session that we fished, I actually got to catch a few octopus and made some really cool prints with them. So I'll leave a link to that up here. And then I'll also leave a playlist right here where we show all of our low tide pocket fishing and poke pulling if you are interested in seeing some more of those. So thank you again for watching. Thank you, Vincent. We'll catch you guys on the next episode.